Hello everyone, in this video I'll be ranking the Warlock Eldritch Invocations on a tier list. So, we have some great ones here, and the first one that we're going to be starting off with is the Agonizing Blast. So this will add your Charisma modifier to the damage that Eldritch Blast deals, and it hits 3 beams, so you get a nice plus 5, plus 6 to your damage. And also, Charisma is the one stat you can get higher than other stats, besides using a Strength Potion. So, Agonizing Blast is easily an S tier, because Eldritch Blast is the best cantrip in the game. Being able to add extra damage to Eldritch Blast is just incredible. So this goes without saying. That's an extra. That's an S tier for sure. And next we got the Armor of Shadows. This allows us to cast Mage Armor as a free action. Doesn't require a spell slot. This can also get pretty crazy if we pair it with the Wizard because we can get. I'll be doing a build guide on that later. But you can you can abuse this by continually casting Mage Armor. Now, the thing is, the Warlock can use Light Armor, but it's able to use Mage Armor and wear clothing, and typically clothing options are going to give us better spellcasting boosts, so I would recommend taking this, potentially, because just, especially later on in the game when you get really good clothing options, I would say this is probably an S tier, I don't want to give too many S tiers, but this is S tier, I would say, because Armor of Shadows can be abused, and you can do some pretty crazy stuff with a wizard. On top of that, Mage Armor is a pretty good spell for survivability's sake, and being able to cast it for free is really nice. It could be an A or S tier. Maybe I'll just put it in the A tier just to be safe here. Next, we got the Beguiling Influence. So this is going to add our proficiency bonus, or gives us a proficiency in Deception and Persuasion, which is some of the most effective uh, proficiencies to have because conversation options are very plentiful in this game. I'm going to put it in the A tier because Beguiling Influence is just, it's a good one to have. Deception and Persuasion is extremely common, so being able to have proficiency in that is super useful. Next, we've got Beast Speech. Now, I don't like this spell, or Eldritch Invocation, because we only get to choose six of these if we go full 12 levels in the Warlock. And having one tied up with something that's extremely plentiful in the game, there are beasts, or there's potions of animal speaking everywhere. You can also pickpocket Volo every single night and get five of them. So, while it is a decent one to go with, uh, being able to cast Speak with Animals for free is nice. There's so many potions, so I'm going to have to put this into the D tier because it's just so classed. You can use a simple item to be able to get that. Now, some people always complain about items being compared to spells. This one in particular is so freaking common that I think that this does belong in the D tier. Not that the spell itself, I would say Animal Speak is an S tier spell, but you can get the potions that do it pretty quick and easy, so D tier. Next we have Devil's Sight. This is potentially the best Eldritch Invocation. What this does is it gives us dark vision up to 24 meters. Not only is it just dark vision, it's the only way that you can get magical dark vision. So, some other classes and uh, some of the races will get dark vision, but they don't get magical dark vision. So, we can cast uh, a cloud of darkness and we can walk inside of it with Devil's Sight. This leads to some really interesting class combinations. So, I'm going to put Devil's Sight in the S tier because it just brings so much to the table. If you, you can get by the whole game without using Eldritch Blast if you just chose not to for whatever crazy reason, but... You're going to end up being blinded at some point or in darkness. It's inevitable. It's like Thanos. So, Devil Sight, pretty useful. S tier. Next, we got Fiendish Vigor. Now, I see a lot of people torn on this because, it, well, hey, if you take the Fiend, you're going to get the increased health from taking out the uh, enemies with the the Dark One's luck. So, I would say this is this one's actually pretty good, though, if you're not a Fiend. So, if you're going with the Goo, Grand old one, Great Old One Warlock, or the Archfey... This can be really nice because this gives you seven temporary health points. So you can, this doesn't actually use a spell slot. You can continually cast this. So uh, every combat encounter, cast your Fiendish Vigor before it starts. You're going to have an extra bit of health. I'm going to put it in the A tier. I know that a lot of people don't like this, the False Life spell, but it's useful in this case because it's going to be a free casting. Some of these are free, some of them are not. And that's what really makes them good or bad because some of them. You waste a lot of your spell slots on something that's not that great. Now, next is the Mask of Many Faces. This gives you a free Disguise. Now, Disguise is most useful in Act 3. And by Act 3, you're going to have an item that allows you to do this. So, it can be good early on in the game. But I feel like the Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast are just so much better than it. I might just put it in the C tier because it's not the worst thing ever. 
uh, it's just out class and you can get a free well, you can change your appearance much easier later on in the game and typically there's going to be someone that can prepare this spell so yeah i'll put it in the seed tier next we got repelling blast this can yeet people off of the rooftops i'm putting that in the as tier because agonizing blast adding a charisma damage to the modifiers on level two i take both of these because being able to push them back 4.5 meters is massive What's also nice is if you see three people on a rooftop or near a ledge, you can go do do do, shoot your Eldritch Blast at all three of them, and it'll push them all back. Now, it doesn't unfortunately stack the 4.5 meters pushback, doesn't get applied three times. You can attack the same target three times, but hey, that's still really good. You can get a lot of eliminations this way. But be mindful if you knock them down a chasm and they get lost, the loot's gone. Now, some enemies are going to have good loot. And the loot's always the same in this game. It's not like enemies switch out loot or it's not randomized. So uh, eliminating certain targets is totally fine. If not, maybe pickpocket them beforehand and get what you want and then repelling blast them. So yeah, S tier because it's just so powerful. Next we got one in one with shadows. This allows us to cast this. Uh, the only issue that I have with this spell, it lo you lose invisibility if you move. So if you cast this and move one inch, you're you're not invisible anymore being invisible is really nice but this one just feels like it has a bit of a gimmick to it now what makes it redeemable <laughs> this is a little bit of a it might get patched out in the future maybe probably not but if you use the fly as an el partial elithid it allows you to move around freely so you can position yourself with this it's not bad it gives disadvantage to attack rolls from attackers and gives you advantage on attack rolls being able to partially fly as an or being able to fly as a partial lithid and not break this makes it probably B tier, but otherwise I would just probably take something else. Next we got Thief of Five Fates. This sounded great in theory until you realize it's only castable one time per long rest. So that stinks. <laughs> so this is just Bane. It gives you it gives the attackers a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. So it's the opposite of bless. You can only cast it once per long rest, which kind of sucks. It doesn't take a spell slot, but it's probably C tier. Like, it's useful, but oftentimes just better off doing something else. Next is a sign of the ill omen. So this does use a spell slot. You don't want to be burning your level 4 spell slots on the bestow curse. This does give disadvantage on attack rolls, which is really, really nice. But you are using up your spell slots with this, so... There's better usage for spell slots, making me put that into the D tier. Next, we have Mire of the Mind. That's not bad. The slow spell is pretty good in this game, but this one also uses a spell slot, and I feel like slow is just not as good as some of the other spells that you can get. So, uh, some people like slow. I like confusion a bit more. I may just put this in the B tier because it's okay, but you do end up using your spell slot on it. So I'd recommend going for something else probably because you don't have many warlock spell slots and this is not going to be the best choice typically. So yeah. Next we have Book of the Ancient Secrets and I think this is kind of whack. It gives you three free spells. It gives you Silence, it gives you Chromatic Orb, and it gives you... Ray of Sickness, level 1 necromancy spell, it deals poison damage. And poison damage is the weakest damage type because everything in its mother resisted in this game. Book of Ancient Secrets, you get this as a Pact of the Tome, so you could get it elsehow. But I do just think that this is kind of crappy. Chromatic Orb is nice, but you can only cast them once per long rest, making it kind of weak, I would say. Just better options out there. So I'm going to put it in the C tier. It's just you got better options. Next is Dreadful Word. I say that Confusion is a pretty great spell. It does require concentration, but you can confuse a large group of enemies, and it's a pretty good crowd control. They can attack each other with it. It lasts for a good amount of turns, and uh, I would say that Confusion is probably... I want to put it in the A tier. I think this is the best of these spells. Um, confusion is probably the best, and then Slow, and then Polymorph. I feel like Polymorph is just not as good as some of the other spells. Mind you, it is a level 4 spell, so you're not going to lose out much by casting it. Slow and... It's tough. These two spells just are very situational. I don't think they really bring a lot to the table, I guess. So, I'll probably put Sculptors of Flesh into the D C tier. Mire the Mind. These two could swap around. They could... It just depends. I really don't like picking them. Next, we got Minions of Chaos. Now, this is really good, honestly. The reason being... While it does require a spell slot, 
you do get a minion, which is huge. So you can choose any of the elementals. And what's nice about them is they are a meat shield for you. <laughs> and we, what we can do, especially if we've got a bard on the team, this makes it even better. We can summon in our minion of chaos and then short rest. And it'll stay until long rest. That puts it in the S tier for me. Summons are extremely powerful in Baldur's Gate because they take they take aggro from your team. You're going to survive longer having that meat shield on your side. So, yeah, I really like the water elemental because it can apply wet. But any of the elementals are good, honestly. Like, even the earth elemental can continually cause prone, which is nice. So, yeah, S tier for sure. Uh, make sure to use your short rest after applying that if you want your full spell slots back. Same thing with Whispers of the Grave with Beach Speech. You can actually, within 10 minutes of playing Baldur's Gate 3, you can get an amulet that gives you a free Speak with the Dead. Don't sell that thing. Um, Speak of the Dead is an awesome spell. You may need to use Mask of Many Faces if you end up killing someone and then want to talk to them. But again, there's solutions for all three of these spells that are really common. So, yeah, you can disguise yourself with a disguise kit and then you can use Speak with the Dead from the amulet, making both of these kind of useless. Next is Otherworldly Leap. I really like this spell. Uh, triples your jump distance for 10 turns, which is awesome, especially in a martial class. Being able to jump across the entire battlefield is awesome. It doesn't use a spell slot, so that makes it a little bit better. If it did use a spell slot, it would be automatic F tier, but I'm going to put it in the B tier. It's not bad. It's just not one that you're going to use often, but hey, for free, that's good. And you can kind of cheese it and apply it before combat, put it into turn base mode, get your other will leap on everyone, and then start combat. So you got options. Finally, we got Life Drinker. So what this does is it's like Agonizing Blast for melee. It adds our our uh, charisma spell casting modifier to the damage of our melee attacks as necrotic damage. Now, necrotic damage isn't really the best, I'll be honest, because many things will resist it, especially Act 2, but you're not going to be level 12 in Act 2, and you can only get this at level 12. So, for that, I'm putting this tier. Uh, at level 12, this is probably the prime Eldritch Invocation to grab, especially for Pact of the Blade, which I think is probably the best Warlock um, Pact that you can go with. So, adding your Charisma modifier as necrotic damage, pretty great. I would probably, rank, trying to rank these within the levels themselves, probably go something like that. Devil Sight, by far the best. Magical Darkness, Sight up to 24 meters, massive. Agonizing Blast, adding your Charisma Modifier, huge. Repelling Blast, the pushback's awesome. Being able to summon in a, a summon is huge. And then Life Drinker, just great as well. So there it is, the Warlock Invocations, ranked on a tier list from best to worst. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you'd move any of these around. I'm always curious to hear people's thoughts in these spells. And yeah, if you found this video fun or useful, please hit that subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.